Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simons, like diamonds. We are back again. This is going to be a special edition of unchurched because it's going to be just me sitting here in my office covering one of the hardest hitting topics that we've covered certainly one that has gotten the most downloads and the most discussion and the most questions for me personally which is dealing with anxiety and i'm also going to talk about alcohol as well and this will really be a follow-up to the blog post or slash wherever you might have seen it youtube video slash podcast that i did about my battles with both alcohol and anxiety. And one of the big questions that I want to address is, you know, does the anxiety just go away? And I want to be very clear that it it doesn't. Uh, The good news is I have not had a full-on, like, anxiety attack in in a couple of years now. And um, that's great news. But I personally believe if you've ever struggled with alcohol, like for instance, if if you are what doctors would diagnose as an alcoholic, I I think even if you go sober for 15 years, there's always still going to be that desire. Or if you go by an old bar or a place that uh, you used to frequent a lot uh, with alcohol involved, there's still some emotions and, and maybe even some desires to have that, even though you might not do it. And maybe it's been a decade or more. And so I believe, at least from my experience so far with anxiety, that if you are an anxious person, if you've suffered from you know, anxiety attacks, panic attacks, that it's not something that's ever just going to completely disappear. But doggone, it's something that you can conquer. And so when I say the word conquer, and I'm telling you this to make sure that you don't ever feel like you're alone out there, because I know what that's like. And I'm telling you so that you don't feel like that you're different or weird, that man, like Joe, you know, Joe suffered for 14 years. If you don't know my story, I, I did suffer for 14 years, plus or minus, with with really severe anxiety attacks to the point, I mean, I missed best friend's weddings. I missed out on a lot of stuff in life. Uh, I, I, you know, took different job routes. I mean, my entire life, I ruined relationships with some girls that I truly cared for. Uh, I, I, I literally had a whole different life path. Looking back now, I know it was God's plan. Um, but at the time, like I couldn't figure it out. And I made some really poor to choice choices because I let anxiety really take a hold of my life. But now look, looking at it, I mean, what a blessing that I've been able to, to serve people like you that if you're listening to this, that maybe you've suffered this or, or have a family member that that is, and you're trying to figure it out. Uh, it, it, it's tough and it never really does go away. And I'm going to tell you a story that happened here recently, uh, just to prove that, but also how, how I beat it and, uh, and, and how amazing that felt when I did, you know, the, the whole facing your, uh, your fear. So first and foremost, let me talk about the three things that you need to avoid if you want to try to minimize the amount of anxiety attacks you have in your life. Number one is alcohol. I do still drink. I, uh, for those of you who missed that other podcast I did, I'm now on month seven or eight. Uh, it was sometime in April that I stopped, uh, you know, binge drinking, if you will, where I put a limit on myself and just said three. I had an old boss that, that also had some problems with alcohol and he gave me that challenge and he's like, listen, Joe, if, if you can't stop at three drinks, you got a problem. And he's like, make no exception. Just let it be a part of your life. Otherwise you need to go completely sober and, and get some help. And uh, that was that was a challenge I put on myself. Uh, I self-regulated. Obviously, it's between myself and, and God and, and really no one else. And uh, and I've stuck with it. And now there have been a couple times where I've gotten larger drinks. You know, instead of having like you know three beers of twelve ounces that I might have uh, had one that was a sixteen ouncer or something like that. Uh, but but that was like a, a random occasion. I believe it was my forty first uh, birthday. We were down at the beach in uh, in Vero, um, and 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 that's once again that's that's it's not that I was going to feel a whole lot worse by having four more ounces uh, in a in a beer. It's it's more about uh, my promise to myself and my promise, you know, to to God, and uh, and just making sure that I don't have that problem. 
So I tell you all that, that you can still drink. You don't have to go cold turkey. I think you maybe should if you're having a problem stopping. And if you can't stop at three drinks, then, yeah, it might be time to, uh, you know, to talk to someone. Um, uh, and, and I'll be glad to talk to you uh, if you ever want to chat. You guys all ho- hopefully have my email by now. It's joe at saltstrong.com. But I would challenge you, uh, if you're having any anxiety uh, in, in life, is to cut back on the alcohol big time. That was a game changer because – you know, most of us, I did the opposite. If you're like me, you know, the anxiety stresses you out and just makes you super anxious, obviously. And the easy way to overcome that, at least in our head is, Hey, I'll drink alcohol. and I'll kind of, you know, dumb it down a little bit. And it does uh, to an extent, but once you go past a certain level and for me and for most people, it's a couple of drinks, then all of a sudden it, it almost becomes worse. And the drunker you get, the worse it gets. So you get more and more anxious and you start sweating more and, and I mean, you, you, it, it can really, really take take hold and some really bad things can happen. And, and I saw that happen in my life over and over again. And of course, the next morning you wake up just hot and sweaty and even more anxious and the hangovers are worse. And so what do you do? You have another drink. Uh, hey, I'll just, I'll have one more and it'll make me feel better. And it does. It feels great to have a drink after you've been drunk the night before. Um, it certainly does. I mean, there's a reason that, that people do that, uh, but that just continues on this, you know, really vicious cycle of, of having to rely on alcohol and then overdoing it and then having more and more anxiety. Ask me how I know. So that's number one is cut back or eliminate alcohol completely. Number two is sleep. Uh, that was another one I took for granted is, uh, is how important, sleep is to rejuvenate. I mean, most of the healing that happens in your body and in your brain, because as you know, this anxiety is really a big function of your mind and your brain. Um, I mean, you know, if you've had a full on anxiety attack, you know, it's it's like your your mind believes that you're running from something that might kill you, that your mind almost believes that you're, you know, it's the same sensation of, of you being in a forest and there being a bear or a bobcat or something crazy behind you chasing you down. That's what you feel like, even though you might be in a room all by yourself. You might be in a room that you know there's nothing there that could possibly hurt you, but your mind is putting these really negative thoughts in your head that something's about to happen. And you're essentially just afraid of of the future. You're afraid of what might happen there that second, even though you know there's nothing there. Uh, and, and I know because I did that. It was it's crazy what I let my mind do to me. And a lot of it was lack of sleep. I would stay up too late, worried about stuff. I'd wake up early, worried about stuff. And um, one thing I, I've I've done, and and I try not to to let this be something that I always do either. Just like alcohol or anything, you can get addicted to it. But is just those little gummy melatonin. You can get them at Publix uh, that are you know over the counter. A uh, little gummy melatonin. I just take one. It says you can take up to two or three. I take one, and for me, that like it and it didn't zonk me out where you feel tired the next day. You just you feel good. So anytime you're having trouble sleeping. Take one of those little bad boys, I think about an hour or so it says before you go to sleep. For me, it works usually 30, 40 minutes, and I'm, I'm good. I, I don't wake up to pee. Like, I am out cold, and I could get a solid eight hours of sleep, and I feel so much better. So if you are having some issues with anxiety and continuing anxiety attacks and, and just panic attacks, which is a whole slightly different topic, um, try that. You know, try taking some melatonin. Uh, obviously, check with your doctor. I'm not a physician. Check with your doctor if you have any allergies or any other things that it talks about on those uh, bottles. But that has worked wonders for me in terms of sleep. And what I found are the days that I have the most sleep, I am so, uh, so much better in terms of my anxiety levels and so less likely to have any anxiety at all which has been really cool. And just because of that sleep, it's critical for our bodies to heal and our brains and our minds. Uh, That is where most of the magic happens. Um, So we'll move on to the third one. And this is going to be really one of the main topics of the, uh, of this podcast, because it's something that happened to me here recently is caffeine. So if you've read my book or, or listened to the other podcast I did for a while there, I was popping caffeine pills 
and and if you're not the one listening to this, if you're not the one who's suffering from anxiety attacks, and it's you know a daughter or a son or a, a spouse or a girlfriend, boyfriend, and you're just trying to put yourself in their shoes, when you have an anxiety attack, it, it is like running away from a puma or something in the woods behind you. It, it is like trying to reach the top of the surface if you're down 60, 70 feet and there's a shark coming after. Like your body is moving and giving it all it can. Like it is like you are sprinting and you literally get physically exhausted. Like you could get, if you have a full on panic attack or a couple back to back, which I've had many, many times, you you feel like you, you've, you've, you've run a sprint. Like you were physically drained and mentally drained. And a lot of times you just want to take a nap. So I would get so tired during the day battling these anxiety attacks in class and then having to you know, do talks or, you know, do stuff with friends that, you know, by the time we went out at night when everyone else was like geared up and ready to go, like I was, I was beat. I was drained. I just wanted to go to bed, but I didn't. So I'd take, you know, caffeine pills and they actually, they help. I mean, it's caffeine. It's like, boom, gives you a quick little jolt. But the problem, like anything, caffeine, the alcohol that I mentioned earlier, it can be very addicting. And the more you take and the more your body gets used to it, the more that you have to take for it to you know, feel any impact at all. And so for a while there, I was so reliant on these caffeine pills. And man, thank God that he was watching over me. It didn't let it completely kill me. I don't know how to have a heart attack, how many caffeine pills I was uh, popping there with alcohol and all the other dumb stuff. But man, it was so stupid. So I tell you the to go easy on the caffeine. What I found for me personally, I still drink coffee. So another great thing, you don't have to you don't have to eliminate alcohol out of your diet. You don't have to eliminate caffeine. If you love drinking coffee, do it. I, I will say personally, I, I got on a little little hot streak there with five hour energies. And I will I will vouch and say that is one of the worst things that you can have if you suffer from anxiety is eliminate the five-hour energies, eliminate the bang energies or the, the monsters. That stuff is horrible for you. I mean, it's loaded with sugars. It's obviously loaded with, with caffeine. I know there's some, you know, Red Bull that's sugar-free or low in sugar, and even with the five-hour energy, it says it's no sugar. That's baloney. There's something in there that, like, it, I mean, it. People have had heart attacks from having too many of those things. It is it is one of the worst things I found personally, and I've talked to other people that have said the same, that it almost like creates anxiety in our bodies. And I mean, your heart is pumping a million miles an hour. Five-hour energy, Monster, Red Bull, all that stuff is the last thing that you need if you are dealing and suffering from anxiety tax. So I will just put that out there right now. Drink coffee, pound coffee. Uh, it's a whole lot safer uh, alternative and it still gives you the caffeine that, that all of us love and enjoy. And it's really all that you need. I am just telling you from experience, every time I've done the five hour energy, bad things have happened to my body and my mind. Uh, I don't know what's in that stuff. It certainly works. It will give you a jolt of energy, uh, but doggone, it is it is now just on my like do not touch list after trying it. And, it, and I've had like 60 of them to put in perspective. I've, it's not like I just tried it once. Like I've tried over and over again thinking, oh, it was maybe a lack of sleep or just a bad day. And every time it is, it has done bad things to my body and, and, and increased my level of anxiety. All right. So on that subject, Recently, I'm part of a group called C12, and it's you know Christian ma- It's a Christian mastermind, is how I explain it. But uh, you meet every month, and it's twelve other CEOs of faith-based, you know, kind of Christian-based um, organizations, companies, etc. And it's it's really been great. And one of the things that you do once a year is you get in front of these 12 other CEOs and you have to present your business. Um, and it's like opening up the books, showing them QuickBooks, showing them your numbers, sh- you know, all the dirty laundry. Uh, you know, here's where we're great. Here's where we're, we're, we're really short. Here's our weaknesses, our strengths. Here's some opportunities. And, and just get feedback. So mine happened recently. Uh, I actually got pretty good sleep uh that that night and i had i did have one one beer the night before um so but that wasn't the problem and i'll I'll get to the problem here in in a second and so that morning you know woke up feeling good took a long walk around the neighborhood like i do did my journaling like things were going great and i got a little worked up uh on the way there because one thing that 
you know, putting yourself in my shoes, if, if you do have anxiety, the public speaking can be tough. And I almost prefer public speaking on stage to what I was the environment that I was in, which is at a, a table where everyone's really close and, you know, you got 12 other people around you and, you know, you can't really go anywhere. You can't leave. You can't move. I'm sitting down having to present. And the whole morning, why I'm, I'm uh, you know, listening to other people talk and we're having our normal discussions, I knew for about two hours they were going to get to grill me on the spot. And, and that, if, if you have any anxiety, you know that probably me just saying that of having to be in front of 12 other people. And these aren't like my best friends. They're, 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 they've now become friends, but these are other CEOs from other companies and other parts of central Florida. And, uh, and man, I was, I was like working myself into, uh, a tizzy, if you will. I was, I was getting really, really anxious about it. Just thinking that I was going to have to, you know, sit there and get grilled for, for two hours or longer. And that the spotlight was literally going to be on me. There's no way I could deflect it. There's no way I could ask to to leave. You know, if you've suffered from anxiety attacks, you know that's that's always a good thing to have in your back pocket is kind of an escape route, right? Uh, that hey, if I do get stuck in this party or this social scene or you know a mall or a church or wherever it is with a lot of people, that you always have kind of an escape route to go get away. And I knew that was gone. Like this is my time. Uh, that uh, there was no getting out of this. Like I was there. I was going to be stuck in this chair with people throwing questions at me and picking apart my business for two hours. And I, it, it, it started scaring me. And so I did the worst thing possible. So I started getting a, a little panic and I'm doing my breathing. So I'm not, I did not have an anxiety attack, but I could feel it coming on. I'm getting a little bit hot and like, oh, oh boy, oh boy. And so I started doing my breathing and that calms me down. But over time, as I mentioned earlier, it, it starts wearing on you, like just that back and forth of breathing and your mind kind of racing real quick and having a little fear uh, seeking in your body, it it wears you out. Like physically and mentally, like I'm kind of getting drained now. So it's like 11, 1130. I'm going on at that one o'clock time frame. So what do I do? I go over and pour myself the biggest cup of coffee imaginable at 11 something in the afternoon. I did the last thing I needed, but I did it. I was like, oh man, this is going to get me pumped up. I went against all my advice I'm giving you and I pounded this thing and then boom, right away, got this great rush. I'm like, all right, this is good. But all of a sudden it was like lunchtime. I'm now getting even closer to it. Now I'm like starting to sweat. I can feel the little beads sweat up on my forehead and I'm like, oh no, like it's happening. Like this caffeine now is getting me in a state of mind and and just my overall body is like heart's pumping faster like oh my gosh so now I'm freaking out even more and it's like an hour away I'm like count down the minutes I can barely listen to what other people are saying and I'm just I'm doing my breathing I'm doing my breathing what's funny is I I know and there's probably a couple of them listening this none of them had any idea Um, and I think that's one thing that Gosh, is, is people that that deal with anxiety, we're so tough on ourselves when in reality, everyone else has their own issues. I'm willing to bet, even though these people were, I mean, literally inches away from me, we're on this tight, tight knit table, circular table. None of them had any idea I was going through this. I'm willing to bet almost 100% that's the case. Um, and the thing ended up going fine. I, uh, I, I did the breathing. And if you guys missed, you know, my... Uh, you know, kind of my, my tips on the anxiety. It's as simple as just breathing through the nose, super slow. And I actually say the word relax. I I repeat it why I breathe in through my nose. So I'm just going, you know, inhaling through my nose and just saying the word relax uh, once. And then on the way out, I do a, a slow exhale through my mouth. So inhale through the nose and then exhale through the mouth. And I go super, super slow. And it's, it's the same thing that, that free divers, are doing to basically calm their body down before they go down super deep. They're they're trying to get their body almost in like in a in a sleep pattern where it's just got zero fear. There's I mean it, it's the most calmest you could possibly get your body. Your heart rate's at all time low, and you're essentially fooling your body into the opposite of of fear. The opposite of what happens when you're down sixty feet and running out of uh, out of air. That's how free divers you know it's one way they get down so far is they're tricking their mind right off the bat before they go down to be in the complete opposite mindset of where they're going to be when, you know, they're 10 feet from, uh, from the surface, completely, uh, completely out of air. And so that's all I did. I literally calmed myself down 
to, to that extreme where it was almost like I could go to bed. And I've done that before, even just trying to get sleep when the, you know, that and melatonin, I'm 99% certain I could fall asleep at any given uh, night now uh, just by doing the same breathing act- activities, just calming my body. Once again, slow, forward, even six count, depending on, on your breath, uh, through the nose, and the same thing on the, on the way out. And it's magical what that does. So great news is the presentation went awesome. I was able to breathe myself out of it. And I learned a really, really valuable lesson, which is never, ever, ever rely on caffeine or alcohol to get you out of an anxious uh, position or speech or anything that might cause anxiety for you. It actually does just the opposite. And I knew that. You probably know that. And yet we still go back to it. You know, there, there's still, maybe it is it is a, a wedding or something coming up and you end up having a drink or a shot of tequila or whatever it is to kind of calm you down. And, and for some of you, that, that's okay. Every, everyone's body is a little bit different. But for most of us, if we truly have anxiety, like severe anxiety and anxiety attacks where it's, it's a true disorder, uh, which is what I suffer from, it's the last thing you need. Normally, that will only cause more damage and only be worse. It is not what you need. Uh, I found that the best times to to do, you know, the caffeine or obviously in the morning and then stop it, let it just be natural and then get out of your body. And if you do have something that's that normally would cause anxiety in the morning, don't drink as much coffee. Just drink a little bit of it. And the same with alcohol, Uh, small, small, small doses, especially if it's right before something that's going to cause you anxiety. I have found out time and time again, the really, really tough ways that those two things are absolute killers. And then when you combine it with lack of sleep, if you've been up and not sleeping well, waking up too early or waking up all the time during the night, uh, man, that's just a recipe for disaster to have alcohol and then trying to, you know, beat it with caffeine in the morning and, uh, and a lack of sleep. It's, uh, it's just like you're asking for it. So I hope that helps. I, um, I hope that sheds a little light and just makes you feel like, you know, that you're not alone out there. If you suffer from this, I, I wish I would have heard, you know, podcasts like this, I wish I would have heard someone tell me that it's okay to be going through this. And if you listen to the podcast with Pastor Johnny and I uh, about alcohol and depression, I thought that was so cool to hear from a pastor that says, you know, it's okay. I, I think some some churches have done a bad job of making, uh, you know, certain people feel like you, you're an outcast and like, hey, if you're really praying hard enough, this shouldn't be a problem and it should just go away. And uh, that's not the case. I mean, for me, you know, prayer and, and faith played a really big part of it, but it wasn't all of it. Without the breathing and without the, the mindset uh, it and, and without, you know, cutting back on the alcohol and all the other stuff, it, it, it wouldn't have happened. And so don't let anyone ever make you feel like you're strange or different. Uh, or, or that this is, you know, something that, um, that you should be worried about because you're a Christian or, or even if you're not a Christian, doesn't even matter. Uh, it's not, it's, uh, it, and God put it in your life for a reason, just like he did mine. I never would have guessed in a million years, I'd be sitting here talking about it on a, on a headset with complete strangers like you, or maybe you're one of my friends. I don't know. But here I am doing it, and it's so rewarding. And that would be my third piece of advice: is just to talk about it, is uh, you know, to tell someone, tell a friend, tell a, a spouse, parents, kids, whoever it might be. Uh, talking about it has helped out tremendously. Even just getting this off my chest. Normally, I would have been so embarrassed to tell anyone about what happened last uh, last week because it was the closest I had come to having a, a full on anxiety attack in in at least a couple of years. And, 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 and I got through it. And, and to me, that was so cool. Now even talking about it, I just feel better just getting it off my chest and talking about it. So know that you're not alone and, uh, and, and, and know that it will go away and, and yeah, you will conquer it. And yeah, it might always kind of be there. There might always be something in the back of your, uh, your head. And there might be little things like that, like knowing you're going to be grilled for two hours in front of a group of people or having to go speak in, in front of a big group of people that, 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 that tends to cause some anxiety that it, it's natural. It's going to happen and you've got ways to fight it. Cut back on the alcohol, cut back on the caffeine, get good sleep, do your breathing and have some faith. Just have faith that, hey God, I know this is happening for a reason. I know you got a plan and I and I trust you. So guys, that's it. Thank you so much for listening into this special edition of Salt Strong Unchurched, all about alcohol and anxiety. Let me know 
let me know. I really do want to hear from you. Anything else that you guys want to talk about? That this whole thing came about because a lot of people asked the same question: "Is hey, I, you know, is it weird that I'm still kind of getting some anxiety here and there? I can't feel like I'm beating it." Yeah, that's it's completely natural. So if you have anything, please shoot me an email: Joe J O E at saltstrong.com. That's Joe at saltstrong.com. I would love to hear from me if you have any awesome stories. Uh, any other people that you want me to interview, any other topics, I would love to hear your feedback. I might not get back to every single email because I tend to get flooded with these things, but I do read every single one. So thank you all for all the emails, all the love, all the support. Finally, please, please, please go give this podcast a subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and then leave me a review it helps out tremendously with this podcast being found it helps it make it a whole lot easier to keep going with this and to get attract really good guests etc so please go to either itunes or stitcher or wherever you might listen to it and subscribe and leave a review i will talk to you on the next podcast episode peace Cause it's in my soul it was past.